Welcome back. This is what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Now, managing the workspace during the pandemic. That's what we're talking about. And we have Kemi. She is a graduate of instructional technology from John Hopkins University, Baltimore, Maryland. She is the managing consultant of Learning Solution Nigeria Limited, a human capital development firm that specializes in developing people and organizations with over 20 years experience in human resource. She has held leadership position in several organizations, developed processes, provided human capital consulting, and facilitated and organized training programs in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and Uganda. Now remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Waze. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp um, to 081-8038-4663. Thank you so much for coming, Kemi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, um, today we're having 20 years, 21 years experience, <laughs> yeah. which is very good it's for very us. Very good. Lot of and I love the fact exactly. that you have an international, um, what's it called? Exposure. Um, ex exposure. And which would lead me to, you know, what I'm about to 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 ask from you. Now we we hear with this pandemic, okay, mm -hmm. companies that can afford it, and like our first guests had earlier said, mm -hmm. the ones that are prepared for it, mm -hmm. they are moving the workplace to working from home. Okay. But I'm looking at it because he mentioned something very key. What is the financial implication on the business? Okay. So, for instance, now if we want to say um, work from home and we have like a 1,000 staff. Capacity yes. like Facebook giving them giving giving one thousand dollars to forty five thousand staff. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of you know. Mm -hmm. So what would you think the cost implication and mm -hmm. truly can businesses or can companies afford to have people work from home, which is cheaper? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of companies have had um, employees working from home for for ages now, so it's not a, a new thing at all. However, it will depend on the kind of work. For example, a TV station, you wouldn't expect people to work from home. How do they produce? Exactly. You know, so it will typically depend on the business um, of that organization. If it was an organization where um, you do, you are, for example, an accounting firm or organizations where you don't actually have Can to do ad hoc here. Yeah. Yes, you know, those are the kinds of organizations. No, so now we are going to those kinds of organizations. Mm -hmm. Have you maybe probably done any study that shows the cost implication on the business? So let's even leave out the ones that cannot afford to, we can afford to not be here. Mm -hmm. The ones that can afford it and they are working from home, they have that policy in place and they can afford. Mm -hmm. So which is cheaper for a business to handle? To come to a space and work or have your staff work from home? It will actually make sense to have staff work, it will make sense to have them work from home because um, a lot of those organizations have contracts with their employees. Now, you have contracts up front that you're supposed to deliver a certain amount of work, so your pay is based on, on your performance, performance, on deliverables. So, yes. um, it's, 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 it's a no-brainer, really. Um, to have people work from home knowing that they need to uh, deliver certain amount of stuff okay. and like um, something happened uh, the, like the index case mm -hmm. he was in uh, Lekki where he had uh, exposure mm -hmm. in the workplace mm -hmm. and uh, those that were also working around him mm -hmm. we are practically exposed to his right. um, um, disease so what will happen to those people if they test positive is it the cost of the organization or the cost of the employee? It will be the cost of the organization because most organizations have HMOs that um, they buy into. HMOs so that will tell you that it's only paracetamol and malaria that I can that cure. Can have yeah. afford, exactly. I mean, I've been to hospitals and, True. you know, when we had an HMO, if I once, once you come to a company, to a hospital and you say you have an HMO, they, they move you to, they one, corner to one corner because you corner. is headache for them. Exactly. Because they are not able to, re they are not able to recover their money. Full so. Money. <laughs> Well, you see, the truth is that these are the kinds of things that organizations need to agree up front with the H HMOs. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it depends on the coverage. But this is a pandemic, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's not something that is, is expected. I mean, I mean, there are some things, I, I wish the insurance uh, people would help me find the word, but there are some mm -hmm. things that they say you cannot control. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those kind of things that you cannot control. So how would you put the burden on the organization to pay 
for that kind of, if perhaps there is an infection from a workplace. And what if the organization cannot, cannot afford, afford it? That's yeah. the reason why in, in a lot of countries the government is intervening. Yeah. And that's why you have situations where you hear of people being paid $1,000 a household to yes, take care of these kinds time. of things because yeah. it's altogether new for but even the organization. Like well, currently. for Nigeria, again, it's new all over the world, but uh, yeah. in Nigeria, we have, we've been given um, some relief already, 20, 20 naira off um, a litre of <laughs> petrol is something. I have <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we hear yeah, that, we but hear. I both feel what this morning, do? today is what? 40, 20th of well, uh, I actually understand. March. 20th of the March? I, I actually understand that some petrol stations have actually no, adjusted. But you cannot that. actually... It's no, not actually what we actually, need. Actually, no, but guess what? Then. It's actually a good thing. But yes. guess what? The, mm -hmm. the truth is, they will tell you that this product, I stocked it at the this high price. price. Yeah. So how do you expect me to sell at a loss? Marketing I think the government was... They were too hasty to take that decision. What right. they should have done was to give a buffer, a period to say, you know what, for the next one week, sell at 145, come, you know, that way they would have they exhausted their stock. I don't well, let, let's move away let's from let's move again. away from that back to exactly. coronavirus and the workplace. Sure. <laughs> okay. Someone says, I have a question. Sure. That's some ways. Her name is Tosin. She says, um, I uh, I work in an office and my office has taken no measure to protect staff Ooh. except sanitizer at the entrance. They've what tried. would you advise? Now the truth is that this is new for everyone. Um an employer of choice will actually go out of their way to actually do something. Um, have people work from home is one option. Um, talk to people about this pandemic. Um, some people will go as far as to offering support because a lot of people are actually afraid. People are going through all kinds of things. Exactly. And the, the truth is that when you're not well mentally, it will affect the work that you the do. Output. So organizations that are forward thinking, organizations that are prepared for things like this offer would offer therapy, support, um, so, newsletters. We have too many questions. <laughs> sure. <laughs> for low income earners, because yeah. right now, you said you went to the shops yesterday, I went to the shops today, yeah. and you know, people are buying. Yes. And so for low income earners, I'm, like this is what, the second week almost, mm -hmm. one more week and it's the end of the month, mm -hmm. people are already low on funds. Right. What would organizations like that do to help their employees? Because if they get paid at the end of the month, there's mm -hmm. barely going to be anything left for them to stock up on. The truth is that every organization has a budget. And unfortunately, this is something that a lot of people are not prepared for. And a lot of organizations don't even have the wherewithal to actually do much more than they're doing. But out of compassion, you would find people who would say, you know what, you can get paid earlier, you can get a portion of your salaries, but that would really de be dependent on the organization itself. Okay, there so no let me, let me take a cue through. from Tosin's question sure. and push this to you. Mm -hmm. So if um, you were to be an employer, what would be the responsible thing to do at this point? Because mm -hmm. it is very, very irresponsible for any organization not to take you know, certain precautionary measures. Right. You know, we're not saying that we are, everybody will say, God forbid. Yes. But if you were an employer and mm -hmm. you were, I mean, and you were, you had maybe like a 50 man staff in your mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. how would you handle the pandemic? Okay, a lot of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of information out there from the WHO. Um, it's there for all to see. But what a irresponsible organization will do will be to reiterate a lot of that information. Um, have counseling sessions or open up the lines for counseling, um, you know, and get people to talk because people are actually going through a lot of, a lot. Yes. So town hall meetings would be advisable at this um, point. Is in it time. concerning the coronavirus now, or yes. we're talking about coronavirus? <laughs> I'm hearing emotional, or, emotional trauma right now. Oh, there's a lot of emotional yeah, that trauma. Comes with there's this, a yeah. lot of and fear. there's a lot of fear going there's around. Fear. Yes. So, so there's a, a lot responsible of company would put in all of these things in place. Correct. Okay, yeah, that's so correct. Another thing I, I should suggest, or should I throw to you? I mm -hmm. can throw to you is this: mm -hmm. What if an organization decides to actually? Tr um, train an individual or a supervisor to actually um, champion the cause of coronavirus so that they can actually um, 
um, create awareness mm -hmm. in an organization. Is that possible? It is possible. And it do is we possible. have something like that? Currently? Well, I'm sure there are some organizations who are actually doing things like that because some organizations are forward looking. Um, some organizations really deeply care about their employees. Um, unfortunately, what we have is we have a lot of organizations who pay lip service to these things. And that's why sometimes at a time like this, the, the gaps are so, so wide, right. it's so Definitely. obvious. Definitely, and it's, it's now obvious yeah. to see that I mean, they don't care. I mean, Yemi mentioned something very mm -hmm. profound before he left the, the couch. He was saying something about um, support. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps, for instance, somebody comes into the space and now realizes that I've been infected and all of that. You know, he was explaining to us, what support should look like. Mm -hmm. Support should be okay. There's job security. security. I can protect you. I can pay some kinds of bills, mm -hmm. ensure that you're getting your salary. You know, how you even fought for someone for to be paid for 13 weeks, I mean 13 months. months. Mm -hmm. You know, what would happen, for instance, if somebody has moved on, okay, to say, okay, the company, they're responsible and they moved the work to the, what's it called, working from home and okay. there is an accident. Yeah. What guarantees, you know, what is the HSC policy okay. that would be in place for that worker or for the people that say, okay, you know what, you can work from home. Mm -hmm. Is there anything and what should organizations be looking at in terms of HSC policies for their workers in the workplace? The truth is that it's not easy to be an employee, employer of choice. <laughs> um, a lot of people just say they are, but they're not. And the truth is what organizations need to do is to have like an employee assistance program and that obtains in England, in America, in uh, more advanced climes where people actually get help for everything. Hmm. Things as basic as stress from moving, moving homes, yes. you know, or stress that comes as a result of a breakup or parenting <gasps> issues. Yes. yes. Or breakout. The truth because yes, yeah. or, you know, or, or parenting issues or issues around drugs. Now, if more organizations here in these parts will uh, adopt those kinds of things. Well, we are ready. Like, yes. So like so now, I hear yeah. you saying all so nice and foreign and all of that. But Nigerian they, businesses, Nigerian CEOs. I mean, I, I was talking with a friend of mine Mm -hmm. And the the she was telling me she was telling me that she works with a multinational. Mm -hmm. Now her husband also works with a very good company, but mm -hmm. they are not a multinational. She said, "From next week, babe, I'm not going to be at work again. They've moved me. That I have to work. We all have to work from, from home. home." But the the the, the boss of the Oga, you know, she's they've been trying to chip it in that Oga come with this thing happening. Is this it's. They don't see it. You know, they have this one mind, one man mindset mentality and all of that. So how do you think it will even apply? Because trust me, even the so-called big organizations in Nigeria, mm -hmm. they actually, some of them operate like a one man business. business. They don't operate it like a structure that should be, you know. So how would we even start to propose this see, it emotional already, support The truth is that. that it has already started to happen. Really? It is happening in some companies mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Now, this situation that has happened took us all by surprise. There's going to be a lot of surprising things that will happen. Because the truth is that a lot of people are going to get more creative. A lot of young ones are exactly. going to get more creative. And they're going to go off and come up with apps and do this and yeah. do that. Yeah. And then there's going to be competition for the good employees. Yeah. And so people are going to be forced to actually do things to keep the good people. Mm -hmm. yeah. and a lot of people have been coming like up this. with job creations um, because of this working from home. They've been coming up with different side hustles. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of um, a lot of organizations end up actually losing employees because yes. now you know they're at home. They have time to think of other ideas and exactly. start their own business. And that's what and you're going to be competing with. Another so. thing to also consider is this, um, there are different verticals we have currently, different industries. Mm -hmm. So what are the industries that would be most affected by this pandemic? Do you have any idea? Well, I think every industry will be affected because um, people are thinking um, different now. Um, Everybody is suddenly thinking, okay, I can do this, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of young people out there who have a lot of energy, who are eager to go out there and do something. So every single industry is going to be affected. Awesome. Another so um, I think we can, we can wrap it up there. <laughs>
Um, I, I, I would like to, I mean, thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. The truth is, I would like to still harp on that support. Support is key. So for, for, for businesses that you know that you basically need to have your staff in the office, like somewhere like a Plus TV Africa, I think you should make provisions for transportation mm -hmm. so that you, you try to control, I mean, where they are going, yes. I mean, on who they are in contact with. with and all of that. Provide, I mean, provide, um, you can provide accommodation, you can provide transportation. Transportation. Especially transportation, because that's where, you know, it, 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 it's like, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. and like um, um, Kemi has rightly said, you know, emotional support is key. You can't take that away. Mm -hmm. When yes. somebody is emotionally balanced, they can actually give mm -hmm. 110%. Exactly. Thank you so much again for coming. Now remember you can watch a repeat broadcast at 8 um, 3 p.m. Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Now it's been a very, very insightful conversation, ladies. Always Thank you so much again, one. Kevin, for coming. So remember to keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Work, injuries, and illnesses can affect every aspect of life for workers and their family. You agree with that, Kemi? I do. Absolutely. Certainly. So that's why you must provide that support she talked about. Now mm -hmm. remember, keep it safe, guys. Keep it safe. Now enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Bye. 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 B